Kind thanks go to Brilliant for sponsoring today's episode. SpaceX Starship Updates and Demo Mission 2 Update My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. And as always there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's take right off. Starship Updates Boca Chica is burning right now. Every evening the night sky is lit up by huge methane flames and liquid oxygen vapor is clouding the test site. SpaceX is in full preparation for static fire and 150 meter hop. And as it seems, they're taking their time with it. This is what we've seen for a couple of nights now. Every time it's roughly the same scenery. Highway 4 next to test and construction site is being closed. The SpaceX staff is clearing the test site. Liquid methane and oxygen are filled into the large tanks of Starship Serial No. 4 and venting starts. The flare stack grows large. Vapor clouds the site. It all has a serious mood to it. It feels like soon there's something to happen. The hissing noise of venting can be heard through various live streams provided by NASA Spaceflight Lab Padre and South Padre via Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. Everyone is standing by to watch history unfold. And we've had a few exciting moments already. In the night from May 3rd to May 4th we saw pre-burners spitting out fuel which is already pretty close to ignition in the sequence. We saw the flare stack going crazy in a massive burst of flames likely caused by too much methane wanting to go through. You can even see it fall to the ground because the flare stack wasn't able to fully burn it off so quickly. Musk has tweeted a picture from under the Starship Serial No. 4 stack recently, showing the single Raptor waiting for action. And this is all that's needed to lift a Starship tank stack. I've seen comments from viewers skeptical if a single Raptor could lift Serial No. 4. Rest assured, it can. Raptor engines at this stage of development are capable of putting out 200 tons of thrust. And Elon Musk is confident that the 250 ton mark will be reached soon. Since a Starship tank weighs around 65 to 75 tons, adding the fuel will still be within the limits of one single engine. I've talked about the slightly tilted flight path due to the off-center placement on my last episode. But even that should cause no significant problem. Charles Brothers has provided me with a fantastic drone flight from a day ago. So what you can see here is as close to real time as you can get when it comes to aerial footage of the test site in Boca Chica. Here you can see serial number 4 on the test stand and the ants nest around it. This is where history is made. If the Starship program works out in 50 years, people will talk about this site in the same way that we now talk about Redstone for example. And all this in one of the most remote places you can imagine. Somewhere in the dunes of Boca Chica. And then the big moment we'd all been waiting for happened. For a brief moment, serial number 4's raptor awoke and gave out a short but mighty roar into the night. This is it. Milestone achieved. And it's the first time since the hopper flight last year that we saw engine fire out here. And on we go. This is one day later. Another static fire. This time filmed by Nomad from the NASA Spaceflight Forum. Thank you so much for filming this for us. You rock. The difference between the two tests? The first one was fed by the main tanks and the second one by the header tanks. So SpaceX is testing different scenarios here. It's unknown how long the tests will continue, but honestly I'm fine with it. This is some very interesting action and after this we'll see the 150 meter hop. The testing frenzy is continuing every night right now and Mary is giving us incredible pictures from Boca Chica. Your work is absolutely unbelievable. Thank you so much. On we go with another rather interesting tidbit Elon Musk released on Twitter. Casper Stanley has provided me with yet another awesome render for my episodes showing his artist's illustration of what Super Heavy could look like now. When talking about Raptor engines, Musk let out new information about Super Heavy boosters. So we're going down from 37 Raptor engines to 31. If it is still correct that a gimbaling Raptor engine can only have 200 tons of thrust, that would mean 7 engines with 200 tons and 24 with 250 tons. This leaves us with 7400 tons of thrust at liftoff. If we guesstimate the weight of a Starship and Super Heavy, we get to roughly 5100 tons including fuel and payload. So 7400 tons of thrust should more than do the trick. 
Musk also said that the large fins that were part of the super heavy design up until now are gone with the current internal design. This is a trend we've also seen on Starship designs as they evolved over time. The only real purpose these large fins on Super Heavy and earlier Starship designs had were for leg housings. Since one of the main goals for the design team is to reduce weight, these leg housing fins seem to be gone now on Super Heavy as well. Musk said that the leg design for Super Heavy will be similar to what's expected for Starship. So Casper Stanley copied the current design onto the boosters for now. That's as close as we can get right now, as there is no official information. Musk repeatedly said on Twitter though that the current design on Super Heavy does not have a wide enough span. So it's likely that the legs will either be able to extend at an angle or that they might even go with a flip out design as on the current Falcon 9 boosters. He also said this about the current legs to be found on Starship Serial No. 4. Wider spans, longer strokes and the ability to auto level for uneven ground or leaning into high winds. This always leads me to flip out legs, but SpaceX might come up with an even better design. The goal is to make the leg design as versatile and at the same time as light as possible. Auto leveling is needed for landings on Moon and Mars to be able to choose from more possible landing spots. Leaning into high wind implies that SpaceX wants to widen the window of possible landings on Earth. For example, CRS-20 that I witnessed live was a mission where SpaceX intended to do the same with a Falcon 9 booster. They successfully demonstrated that a landing in stronger ground winds is possible with the current Falcon 9 booster. SpaceX is past the point of just wanting to land their rockets. They're now working on the all-terrain version, a rocket that is capable of coping with unfavorable situations, similar to what a modern airplane is capable of. Last but not least, let's talk Raptor again. What we've seen in various videos of tests conducted so far has always been the so-called sea level engine configuration. Since Raptor engines will have to be used at sea level, where atmospheric pressure is high and in space where ambient pressure is zero, there will have to be two different versions of the same engine. And the space variant is still missing. Referred to as the vacuum or vac engine, the RVAC has not been seen yet. This though could change soon. Musk has stated on Twitter that testing of this vacuum Raptor engine is imminent. He's even given a time frame. One month. So by this time next month we might even get a first glimpse of what a Raptor engine looks like with a vacuum optimized engine bell. There are two ways though to test a vacuum engine. You can either test it in a vacuum chamber like seen here with a Draco thruster or you can test the engine on a normal test stand just not with the vacuum nozzle attached. The problem here is that a large vacuum chamber is expensive, but you cannot test a vacuum nozzle at sea level without that chamber. If SpaceX would do this, the engine bell would experience something called overexpansion, meaning that the exhaust gases lose contact with the inner wall of the nozzle. This can cause vibrations, combustion problems and in a worst case scenario, it can result in the loss of the engine. So it might be that we will see a test video of the RVAC on a normal test stand with the sea level nozzle. No matter what though, it's a good sign for Starship development. If SpaceX wants to get Starship's orbital soon, they will need the Vacuum Raptor engine. On we go as always with the construction site. As you can see in Charles Brothers drive-by, the road site is getting more crowded every day. This is about double the amount of cars than what I saw on my visit in March. The efforts are growing every day and soon SpaceX will need a larger parking lot yet again. Serial No. 5's thrust section has been stacked on top of the engine skirt. Soon SpaceX will be able to test two different starships at the same time. Serial No. 5 is supposed to have a nose cone and Serial No. 6 after that will have fins. And it seems like SpaceX doesn't want to wait for Serial No. 4 to leave the test stand either. They're building another test stand at the launch site right now. This will enable them to have two starship prototypes at the test site. If you think they couldn't go faster. And one last bit, as all the parts for serial number 5 are already there, here's the start of serial number 6. One starship on the test stand, one awaiting final assembly with a test stand in the making and first parts for a third one being made right now. This is incredible. And if you want to get more info about SpaceX's starship development, details about what exactly they're doing and lots and lots of other interesting insights into Blue Origin, NASA, Rocket Lab and many other launch providers and their rockets, 
I suggest you check out my quickly growing library of episodes. Here you can find tons of content about reusable rockets, SLS, the Artemis program and anything else space related. While you're at it, do not forget to hit the like button wherever you see it and please do subscribe if you have not done so yet. This shows the YouTube algorithm that you actually appreciate my work and in return enables me to make more content for you. Thank you. SpaceX is in full test mode in Boca Chica and it's only a matter of time before we can finally witness that 150 meter hop. And that's not the only event we can look forward to in the near future. We have an Atlas V launch coming up on May 16th from ULA sending a US Space Force mission up from Slick 41. Starlink has just got a new launch date. It will launch on May 18th from Slick 40 and I'll definitely do a launch stream here again. And last but certainly not least we have a historic event coming up as well. Demo Mission 2 Update on May 27th, so in exactly 20 days from today, I will have my one year anniversary for starting What About It. Oh, and Demo Mission 2 is launching from Cape Canaveral, sending Doug Hurley and Bob Bainkin into orbit. You pick what's more important to you, but you can bet that it's going to be one heck of a live stream that day. And recently, NASA has brought us a huge dump of reporting, interviews and insights into what's happening in preparation for this historic day with a press conference and several interviews with the two Demo Mission 2 astronauts. There's one problem though. The event spanned for several hours and so it might be a bit hard to actually get the info you want. But hey, that's what you got me and my little team for, so here's the condensed version of what we actually learned during May 1st's NASA info dump. First of all, SpaceX has completed their needed parachute tests for the new Crew Dragon abort system. The final test was done on May 1st, concluding a series of 27 tests in total with Mark III and over 80 tests since the Crew Dragon program started. This marks the last milestone for the Crew Dragon system itself and NASA has approved it. Demo Mission 2 is a very important mission for both NASA and SpaceX. Depending on the outcome of the mission, no more seats will be needed on Soyuz rockets beginning in 2021 and about 90% of the human rating certification will be done on this flight. Launch readiness reviews will come in soon and Team SpaceX will be the mission leader here with NASA being a part of the team. Bainkin and Hurley have been training for this mission extensively, conducting underwater EVA training, virtual reality training, dry rest rehearsals, extensive training inside a Crew Dragon test capsule, training at Pad 39A involving pad rescue. The list goes on and on. But what exactly are they training for? Well, it all depends on the outcome of the launch. Bainkin and Hurley have been training for a 5 to 30 day mission, with the option of turning it into a long duration mission. Crew Dragon is capable of being docked with the ISS for up to 210 days and if anything goes wrong, Bainkin and Hurley will have to stay longer. So for now it's unknown how long exactly the two will stay on board ISS. If everything goes as planned, Demo 2 will take off from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center on May 27th at 4.32 pm Eastern Daylight Time. Crew Dragon will separate from the Falcon 9 second stage at T plus 12 minutes and 2 seconds. And on May 28th at approximately 11.30 am Eastern Daylight Time, the capsule will automatically dock with the International Space Station. These missions take tremendous amounts of effort and preparation. People from all over the world have been working up to this point and it's the culmination of a commercial crew program that has been going on since 2010. It's incredible to see how much work has to be put into some tasks until they can finally take shape and bring the intended results. Going with a step-by-step -step approach is a key for measurable success and today's sponsor utilizes the same concept in a very brilliant way. If you're looking for a platform to improve your STEM skills or just a way to get answers to some burning questions, Brilliant is the perfect place to start your search. Featured in international media and with high ratings from over 60,000 satisfied customers, they have shown for a long time that learning things the brilliant way can be the missing key. With content spanning from basic math to artificial neural networks and all the way to space related content, Brilliant provides a huge library full of storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges and problem solving for you to improve yourself for future tasks. Get new insights into the world and widen your horizon. Brilliant makes that possible with interactive explorations and a mobile app that you can take with you wherever you are. 
brilliant puzzles you, surprises you and expands your understanding of the modern world. To learn things the brilliant way and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up to try out over 60 interactive courses for free. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 people to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Learn new things the brilliant way. Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will you be celebrating my one year anniversary with me on May 27th? And what kind of leg design would be the right choice for SpaceX's Starship? As always, tell me in the comments. And we're back with a Patreon and YouTube member shout out. A very special part of my episode and one I make sure to have twice a week. Patrons and YouTube members are the people responsible for the fast improvements you see on almost every episode. They research, give funding and ideas I could possibly not come up with alone. All this is a team effort, similar to our ongoing exploration of space. Without them, what about it would not be possible and so they have a very special place in my heart. Show your love for them in the comments and maybe even consider becoming one yourself. And as on every single episode, there are new members on the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Paul Norwood, RGM, James Mello, Dries Baumann and many others. You rock! And here's to the team actively working on my episodes. It's growing fast and everyone on it contributes almost to every episode. Today's special shoutouts go to Tim Casper, my new editor, and to Casper Stanley for providing more and more absolutely great renders. Thank you all so much. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It? and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. And as always, there has been a lot going on. That leaves us with... <laughs> that leaves us with... <laughs> Musk. <laughs> Come up with that I could... <clears throat> I curse a lot today. I'm sorry, Tim. <laughs>